Hello and welcome! Today I am painting a phoenix designed by Mini Monster Mayhem. Before getting into the phoenix lore, I wanted to discuss the absolute pain in the booty that is painting fire. So, when it comes to painting, the two worst colors to use are yellow and red. Yellow because it takes approximately 100 layers to cover anything including white, which should be the easiest color for another bright color, such as yellow, to cover. And then there's red. Red is difficult not because it takes a lot of layers to cover, but because it's a huge pain to highlight. When you're highlighting a color, generally you will mix in progressively more white in order to just make a lighter shade of the color you initially used. But when you mix in white to red, you get pink instead of a lighter version of the original red. A lot of people uh, get around this by instead of highlighting, they start uh, adding shadows. You add darker colors into the red, creating shadows instead of highlights. Now I got around this by using uh, pre-mixed paints, also known as uh, being lazy. Um, anyways, so fire. Fire is a living being, right? It's constantly in movement. And you might say, hey, Megan, you're always painting living beings. You always paint monsters. Aren't they also constantly in movement? No. I don't know why, but fire just doesn't look right when you paint it. Maybe it's because it should be moving or because it should be giving off light. And especially with this phoenix, how do you give off a glowing light from the fire onto the phoenix, which is the same color as the fire and also glowing? Stupid. Why do I do this to myself? I swear. Alright, anyways. Um, let's talk about phoenixes before I turn this into a full rant. Um, Phoenixes have a disputed origin. They're said to originate from Egyptian mythology, um, as described by the Greek historian Herodotus, but it is much more closely tied to Greek mythology. Phoenixes are associated across all cultures with sun, immortality, and rebirth. For example, in Christianity, they are tied to Mary and Christ. A phoenix dies in a burst of flame and later rises from the ashes. This can be seen even in popular media, such as Harry Potter. Uh, the phoenix is sometimes pictured in ancient and medieval literature and art as endowed with a halo, which emphasizes the bird's connection to the sun. The oldest images associated with the phoenix have a halo with seven rays, similar to the Greek god of the sun, Helios. Over time, the phoenix began to be associated with the colors red, yellow, orange, and violet. But its early descriptions vary in color and appearance. It was universally described as colorful and vibrant though there was no consensus about its coloration. There is some lore stating that it had peacock-like coloring, and the more popular lore stated it was red and yellow. Its size also varied between approximately the size of an eagle to larger than an ostrich. The bird that is closest and possibly the origin of its appearance is the golden pheasant, 
the current Dungeons and Dragons lore around the Phoenix ties in a lot of old myths and descriptions from books. The Phoenix is size gargantuan. I was very surprised to learn this because I've always thought of it as eagle size. When full grown, it has an over 40 foot wingspan and measures 10 to 15 feet from beak to tail. It bears a resemblance to a peacock with large, vibrant tail and plumage that consists of bright scarlet, violet, yellow, and orange feathers. You may note that I did not include violet, and that is because I didn't read about this until after I painted the phoenix. Yet another example of me not planning and I'm sorry. Anyways, it has a long beak and blue violet claws and deep glowing ruby colored eyes. Uh, I also did not include these and I wish that I had. All right. Uh, in early editions of D&D, the Phoenix has genius level intelligence and is neutral good. They are benevolent and would readily risk their lives for a good cause, but do not enjoy combat. However, in the 5e sourcebook Mordekainen's Tome of Foes, Phoenixes are true neutral gargantuan elementals. They have an animal level of intelligence and are unable to speak or learn languages though they are able to communicate with any bird, so there's that. Phoenixes are native to the plane of fire and are capable of surviving in extreme environments of heat, cold, and even an airless void. The Phoenix's abilities in early editions before it became essentially just an elemental are very interesting, and I recommend ignoring Mordenkainen. By spreading its wings, it can dispel magic. It can perform a dance to exercise evil. The type of dance is not specified, so take your pick. I personally like the electric slide. It casts cure wounds with the touch of its wing, and touching its comb cures disease. Drops of its blood may be ignited, similar to fire seeds, and it can cast numerous spells based around healing, creating light, and fire. The phoenix's most deadly ability is its ability to immolate itself in an enormous fire cloud that is deadly to both it and- Oh! We got a visitor! Here is my cat, Theo, or Theodore. He is very sweet and cuddly and the reason that all of my miniatures have cat hair on them. I also have a few other pets. Uh, maybe one of another one will show up someday. Okay, I removed him, so let's get back to it. Uh, the fire cloud is deadly to both it and those in the area. This leaves behind a gym-like egg, which will hatch into an adorable baby phoenix in 12 days. In fifth edition, it has the following abilities. Fiery death and rebirth, fire form, it can move through a space as narrow as one inch wide without squeezing, flyby, it doesn't provoke an attack of opportunity, illumination, it sheds bright light in a 60 foot radius, legendary resistance, and it is a siege monster. Well, there you have it. I think it came out pretty well, and aside from the changes in 5th edition, I think the Phoenix is a really interesting monster that could be fun to include in your games. Personally, I think I'll try to convince my DM to let me summon. Well, have a great day, and I'll see you later.